everything's loading just fine. It's perfect. So, got a ton of missing assets. Gonna have to log into that. But uh, other than that, no issues. <laughs> a few minutes later. Ah, yes. Wonderful town of Pine Harbor has loaded. What's all this junk? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Gonna have to adjust some colors here. I have to do that each time. It's probably some mod conflict or something. Ah. What's this? Missing connection. Okay. Everything's fine. Lagging a little bit, but it always is. And uh, just when I boot it up, uh, yeah. So let's uh, hit play and let the uh, let the holy. Is everyone dead? No, not everyone. Most people are. This is fine. I'm okay with the events. We've got one resident left. A single person resides here now. Stop me, is it you? Dexter? No. Population of zero, that's pretty impressive. Let me just go fix that and enable some mods, right? No, but for real, the whole mods being broken after the new update thing actually made me realize that I would like to start having to sort of manage this region a bit more than we've had to so far. Uh, which shouldn't be hard to achieve because we're not managing anything by now. It's full on cheat mode basically. But yeah, uh, waking up to a city where everyone was practically dead or at least everyone's parents were dead or girlfriends or whatever you lived with a, if you lived in pine harbor you lived with a dead person your garbage wasn't picked up and you had no electricity um and you had you had no water supply either yeah kind of highlights that i'd actually like to see if we can sort of adhere to the simulation a bit more going forward because i think that could also lead to interesting decisions having to, to be made and an additional layer of gameplay basically having to manage the budget and stuff all right so the extra management thing let's uh yeah, let's take baby steps baby steps um one thing we could start off with is trying to align the demand a little better with what we're actually building so the thing is if you see this office park you see that it provides a ton of jobs and it provides a ton of jobs because we're using the realistic population mod um, and the residential demand as you can see is sky high so uh, something we're gonna do is to try and align that a little better i simply need more people to move in um, and i mean it also kind of plays pretty nice into what we've discussed before about uh, sticking around in pine harbor for quite a bit there's uh, i don't think there's any reason currently to uh, to jump into building a new city or a new town um yeah so let's uh, let's stick around and uh, let's just build out the population a little more make it a little more interesting um so what you can see currently is that i've sort of just raised half this office uh, district because it provided like more than 1800 jobs and there's just not enough people to fill in all those positions so uh, the thought process was, okay, what can, he, what can we have instead if we need more people? And I mean, I guess we can build uh, these blocks, right? These uh, real high density residential blocks. Um, so they're not inspired by one particular area. I think they, they have sort of a generic look, 
that uh, makes them applicable in, in most cities, to be honest. And I think this is an all right spot uh, because I think that the narrative is that, uh, you know, there's been something here before, some older establishment at, at one point in time, but uh, the, the, the block has been kind of demolished at one point and then that made room for building these, uh, well, the, the office blocks that we already have and then um, building these, uh, this residential high density neighborhood. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, I mean, traditionally, some of these um, high density areas are a bit, let's say, uh, dilapidated by now in many cities and they've unfortunately turned into, into ghettos in, in some areas. Um, but I don't think that I'd, I'd classify it as a, as a ghetto here in, in Pine Harbor. Uh, the location is, is pretty good, let's be honest. It's pretty close to downtown. Uh, there's a, a pretty ample amount of uh, greenery uh, around this location. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, it's too bad. Um, I, uh, later on, I, I, I switch up the, the colors of, the, of some of the buildings uh, to make them look a bit more modern. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite a common, common sight that instead of doing like a, a full renovation, which can be quite costly, um, then developers will, um, or the owners of, the, of these, this project will, will maybe like uh, paint it, give it some fresh paint um, to, to make it look a little more fresh. Um, uh, and I think often that's that's fine because um, in many places these areas, of course, are more suited for uh, low-income residents because rents in structures like these are usually uh, payable. <laughs> I guess you could say uh, if you're uh, like a, a low lower income uh, citizen or um, perhaps. Um, there are some some things that just make it hard for you to to be a part of the of the job market and having a, a regular job. So there's a, there's always going to be a need for for this type of, of housing. Um, and in many places around the world, the the quality is actually quite quite good. So I definitely think that whatever country that the region of Conifera is located in is is quite a, a wealthy country. Um, and so these aren't built like exclusively for for low income people when they were built in like the 70s and 80s um, uh, quite the opposite actually they were they were built with uh, with i mean incorporated uh, bathrooms and, and stuff like that to to try and provide like um, a more suitable way of living for people that that lived in the downtown areas at least here in denmark um, these um, residential areas with these big residential blocks they were seen as quite attractive when they were built in like the 70s because they the apartments were rather big and they had some really modern amenities like modern kitchens uh, modern bathroom um, so so while some of the areas are now classified as ghettos then um, it's quite the paradox that when they were actually built, they were seen as like a really good place to locate your family. And I think that's the case for, for this this project uh, or, or whatever you'd call it. I, I don't want to call it projects because I guess that's a pretty negative connotation. Um, we need a name for this uh, set of, uh, of, of, uh, of buildings as well and, and perhaps even a bit of narrative so um, yeah here I'm changing the colors so if, if, if any of you guys have got some uh, like an interesting name we can give then uh, feel free to uh, throw a suggestion in the comments and maybe a bit of a narrative like when was this built um, were any challenges faced or yeah just whatever uh, if you have some Im imagination and want to participate in that way then I'm all for it so as you can see, I'm just now trying to adjust the the one that I made a, a procedural object because that made a really weird shape. Um, so I think it looks a lot better now. Uh, we're adding bollards as an attempt to make sure kids aren't uh, squashed on the cars. And yeah, in, in hindsight, we're adding a lot of bollards. I mean, oh, 
Jesus Christ, I'm actually, yeah, we're going full, fully ham here. Um, looking around, trying to appreciate the work a bit. Um, yeah, doing a bit of intersection work here. And then I'm sort of looking for like a, a suitable path that we can use to build like an overpath to, to the park. I think that would be a, a good fit. Um, as you guys can see, our population uh, number has kind of skyrocketed uh, even just doing this episode. And the reason is that this uh, game Anarchy mod that I'm using to uh, to cheat because I'm a, I'm a snowflake that can't handle the, uh, the simulation. Um, I've enabled like maximum like land value and attractiveness. And this means that uh, all the many of the unoccupied apartments aren't unoccupied anymore so there's been quite a, a population boom and it's also very visible on this, uh, this this avenue that we're working on currently that the traffic is just it's uh, there's pretty high volume of traffic by now actually um and and so i think it's it would be more so i'm, I'm kind of uh, what do you say to manage traffic then we're not having all that many actual intersections where traffic can be slowed down here um, trying to make it as smooth as possible. So here we are building this overpass to kind of allow for easy access to this park area and of course the, the rest of the of the city. Yeah, when in doubt I add hedges and trees. And uh, yeah, that's just an easy way to kind of make uh, things look more pretty. And we're adding some really simple, uh, like uh, intersection markings to uh, to these uh, parking lot roads. I just, yeah, I like this. It adds a bit of character. I, I don't think it's super realistic. Uh, it probably isn't realistic to have uh, such uh, detailed markings for what's basically just an access road full of parking, right? Uh, all right, now we've jumped uh, a bit further north. Uh, just one city block actually and we're just expanding the uh, the, 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 the low density residential neighborhoods of, of Pine Harbor here. So I've been considering this for some time and I think that we're just gonna continue to expand the city a little a little north. Uh, just uh, yeah slowly move further north. So uh, for, for this area I was kind of I had my doubts on whether we should make this like a really modern development or whether it should actually just be the same sort of age that the, uh, the the neighborhood just right next to it on the other side of this main avenue and uh, in the end as you guys can see uh, we're kind of going with the same type of houses so so this this area is it's quite old uh, it's um yeah i guess the, the foundations were laid uh sometime shortly after the, the second world war and then it uh, it was uh, probably fully built out around the 60s or something. I think the the newest houses here are, are from the 60s. Some look a little more modern, but I think that they're they're flexible enough to go for a, a 1960s architecture as well. They're pretty simple in their design. Uh, so yeah, this is just uh, moving the city further north basically. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be a theme moving forward that we are gonna continue uh, expanding. Uh, Pine Harbor, um, because uh, yeah, as I said, I think it's, it's turning out to be a really interesting town. And I mean, at one point, it uh, probably transcends into what you'd call a fully fledged city. And I, I think that's fine. Uh, it has a really good location within the region, and it's a lot of fun to work on. Um, here, we're using, using an intersection marking tool to add like a, a sound barrier. Um, because I, yeah, I think uh, there'd be some, there'd be enough people here to complain and, and moan to the, to the city council for a sound barrier to be constructed. Because this, uh, this avenue has quite a lot of, well, the traffic volume isn't too bad now, but it's, uh, it's gonna connect to, to other small towns and potentially cities in the future. So it's, it's gonna become really a really busy arterial. So yeah, adding these. Um, with intersection marking tool, uh, I think it's, it's much easier than trying to align it as a network or or as a, a line of props. Um, yeah, so I think that works works quite well.
Um, one final thing, if you go to my community page, I've kind of opened the brainstorm session, I guess you'd call it, on what we're going to do with like the, the rail situation here in Pine Harbor. We still don't have a passenger train station. <laughs> we still don't have a passenger train station. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and we don't have a freight station either, which we might need as well. Um, so yeah, it's active right now on our community page. And uh, yeah, if you have, uh, if you love trains and have some ideas, please throw some suggestions. Thank you.